This video is sponsored by Accor. Last week, I converted this space from a poorly organized storage room into my new home office. Part of my design included this Douglas fir wainscoting and trim. It's still in raw wood, so now I need to apply a finish. I've picked a water-based finish for this project, and this week I'm gonna take a moment to explain why I love water-based finishes, the tricks I've learned to get the best results from them, and when and where they work the best. So a super common question that I get is, how do I finish a piece of wood while keeping it light and not turning yellow. I think this is the strongest reason to choose a water-based finish. While dark woods like walnut and cherry look richer when you add oil to them, light woods like maple, pine, birch, and fir, they darken and turn more yellow when you add oil to them. Water-based finishes naturally are less yellow and they keep the wood that light color that looks so good when it's freshly milled. There are plenty of other benefits to using a water-based finish. For one, they are very fast drying. The recoat time on the finish that I'm gonna be using today is one hour, which means I can get four, maybe five coats done in a day by the time I get around to the other side of the room, I'll be able to add another coat. It's incredibly efficient compared to oil-based finishes where uh, doing the same thing could take you a week. And on top of that, water-based finishes are low in VOC, so you don't have to wear a respirator. And if there are people in the home, you don't have to worry about them being exposed to toxic chemicals. Places I don't recommend using water-based finishes is on dark woods and surface that come into a lot of contacts with hand oil. I've had experience with some finishes getting gummy in those situations. It's really best to go with like a conversion varnish or a hard wax oil and I'll save that for another video. For now, let's get into the application process. It's not very complicated. It's definitely something that anybody can do, but I've got some tips and tricks that's gonna help you get a better quality out of your finish. If you saw the original video where I built out the office, you'll know that I sanded all of these boards before I installed them, which I think was a really efficient way to do it and I was happy that I did. But I still have nail holes that I need to fill. The filler that I'm using is a Elmer's product and I'll list it down below. It dries quickly, it uh, it seems to hold its, its color really well. Uh, I like to go a little bit darker than the actual wood when I'm choosing the color. This one is, is golden oak. And I also wanna make sure and sand off any sort of residue or any surface level stuff uh, from the, the filler because that will show up later when I put the finish on. To get rid of the dust that's, that's left on the surface, I use the air hose, which I have close to me because I'm basically in my workshop right now. Uh, if you don't have one of these, you can use mineral spirits on a rag or you can also use a tack cloth. The next step is to mask off any areas that I don't want to get finish on, things like the door frame and all of the paint that's above the trim. Now, I also don't want to discourage people from using this for smaller projects. I'm just showing you a large project because it's what I'm working on currently, but I've definitely used water-based finishes for loads of smaller projects. A lot of my pattern plywood, I've used it on in a lot of furniture pieces. And for the most part, these steps are identical, but at the end of the video, I'll go through a couple tips and tricks that'll help people if they're working on something a little bit smaller. With all the prep work done, I can now start in on the application. And I really like these high density foam uh, rollers. They, they don't leave a surface texture, but they gather a lot of material and I find it really easy to apply the finish with them. And speaking of finish, I'm gonna be using Total Boat Halcyon Clear. This is a water-based varnish. You'll notice I have a bag of satin and I have a bag of gloss. Ultimately, I want a satin finish, but what I've been told by the people at Total Boat is that if you apply the satin directly to raw wood, sometimes the particulate that they add to the satin finish to kind of kill the glossiness of it 
can actually appear on the surface of the wood because it has trouble getting absorbed. So the best thing to do is to actually start with a gloss finish, use that as your base coat, and then go over the top of that with, with the satin later. This isn't uh, specific to total boat finishes. This is across a whole bunch of different finishes. So it's, it's worth keeping in mind if you're gonna be using a water-based finish that's a satin, you, you may wanna start with gloss. Applying the finish is pretty straightforward, especially with the roller. You, you'll also notice that I brought out a paintbrush as well, uh, just to get into some of the, the more detailed sections. And I'm laying it on fairly thick, especially the first coat. It can take a lot because it's absorbing a lot of the finish into the fibers of the wood. I also am moving fast. I don't wanna overwork this finish. The water-based finishes, as opposed to oil-based finishes, they dry a lot quicker. So if you start overworking them, you'll end up with more heavy brush strokes. And so it's best to just kind of keep moving. And if there's a drip, maybe take care of it, but don't linger because it will start to tack up. The way I like to work is very similar to how painters work, uh, where they will lay on a lot of material in the beginning, and then they'll do like kind of a final tipping off where they'll roll back over the top of it to get the surface finish that they want. Getting into the grooves was really easy with the paintbrush. And then for the flatter sections, I found that the roller was the most effective. Honestly, with this finish, I felt really comfortable using a brush and uh, a lot of the brush strokes were settling out really nice. This this finish is specifically designed for boats. And so I think it also was really good at clinging to vertical surfaces. It's definitely a higher viscosity than what I'm used to working with. So it's a little bit thicker and doesn't seem to run much at all. When talking to my friends over at Total Boat, they said that uh, you should lay it on heavier than you feel comfortable with. And I feel like that's really good advice because by laying on thick coats, you can get a, a lot of finish on there. And uh, I really, again, didn't have a lot of trouble with drips. So I did a couple tests to see if I could mask off the wallpaper and I used some blue tape on some scrap wallpaper and it definitely damaged it. So I was a little worried about that. So I went to my local hardware store and I found this thing called a paint shield and this was perfect. It is an incredibly cheap tool, super handy, and I was able to get nice clean edges without worrying about getting the finish on the wallpaper. The first coat in this room took about a full bag of Halcyon in order to cover all the surfaces and the subsequent coats only took about half a bag. So keep that in mind when you're purchasing finish for whatever project you're working on. The first coat is gonna absorb a lot more into that raw wood. It's also gonna look a lot splotchier and um, that's why you have to do multiple coats is, is to seal it. So the first coat is sealing it and if you're worried about how much you've used up, uh, don't worry too much because the second coat will, will use significantly less. And that is great. So that is the first coat done and um, I'm gonna go and immediately do the second coat because it's already dry. You can, you notice that like some of them, it kind of looks a little bit splotchy. All that's gonna even out with multiple coats. Um, also the grain is raised, which you got in here. It may need to be knocked back, but I'm gonna knock, knock it back later. I don't like knocking it back on the first coat because uh, it might be a little bit patchy or you might sand through. So if I do another coat, this time of the satin, and then I can sand that one back, or sometimes I'll even wait till the second coat to knock it back just so that I can keep building layers, then knock it back and then put a top coat over that. Let's talk about cleanup for the brushes and rollers. As I mentioned before, you can use soap and water cleanup for these finishes. And I prefer to do a bulk of the washing outside with a garden hose. 
Using a spray nozzle, you can get the roller spinning really fast with the help of centrifugal force. It flings a lot of the material out of the roller. Also, you may have noticed these insanely sleek hose bibs that I got from this week's sponsor, which is Accor. Accor is a local Washington company and they've designed something that I think is a solution to a lot of people's problems with the traditional outdoor faucet. They can be incredibly leaky and temperamental and uh, I've been fighting with this one for several years. I installed it about six years ago and it looks terrible now. It's sun faded. The Coors hydrants, however, are stainless steel. They're not gonna fade. They automatically seal, they automatically drain and winterize so you don't have to put a foam cover over them. They're compatible with any hose and they have a variety of fittings that you can choose to suit your own needs. Simply plug in to access water and unplug to stop water flow. Unlike conventional brass hose bibs, the hydrant uses water pressure to keep its valve closed. The unique design is extremely reliable, low maintenance, and no leaks or drips. If you want to pick up anything from Accor's amazing line of products, go to AccorWaterSystems.com and use my code MICHAELALM10 for 10% off. Moving on to the second coat of finish, I'm using the Halcyon Clear Satin this time, and I make sure and mix it up to, to make sure any of that particulate that's in there, the stuff that makes it satin, has been fully mixed. So the application process is the same as before, and you don't need to sand between coats with this finish unless it's been over 12 hours. If it's been over 12 hours, the finish is cured to a level that you need to, to sand it again. Um, so this makes it super handy to apply multiple coats within a day. I was able to get four coats on it in a single day, which I would say is pretty darn good. Now, I don't wash my brushes between every single coat. I actually, uh, if I'm gonna leave them for an hour or two, I just cover them with a plastic bag and that'll prevent them from drying out. I gave the second coat a couple hours to dry, a little more than the previous coat, because I wanted to make sure that it was dry enough to sand down all of the raised grain. So when you get wood wet, it expands and fibers kind of pop out of the surface and it can give it a rough texture. So you always want to knock back your finish with either a Scotch-Brite pad or sandpaper that's a high grit, something like 320 grit. The reason I like to wait until the second coat is because you can actually sand through the finish if you're just doing it on the first coat and then you're basically back at square one. So second coat seems to work well for me. five coats on the walls now and as you can tell I've moved in I need an office space uh, so I've I've been editing this video here I've um, got the outlets installed it's looking great I'm really happy with the results and I wanted to cover a couple of, of uh, smaller details <laughs> if you're working on a smaller project uh, I, I like to use these foam brushes these are great to pick up especially if you're trying to get inside of a drawer box I've used water-based finish on drawer boxes a lot, and um, getting to that interior is a little challenging. So a foam brush is your friend for that. I have wiped on the finish, but had sort of mixed uh, results because it kind of messes with the sheen, sort of acts like overworking the finish and, and it hasn't turned out great for me. So um, the other thing that I want to mention is I have a discount code for the Total Boat finish. If you're looking to pick some of this up, go check out the link down below. Um, but I also wanted to say this isn't the only water-based finish and all these processes are going to apply to multiple water-based finishes. You'll know from my old video on finishes that this uh, water-based top coat has been my go-to for a long time. It served me very well. Um, and uh, there's also things like polycrylic, which I've had 
uh, not quite as good of an experience with, but it's more accessible uh, and, and found in a lot more box stores. Also, if you don't live in the United States, which a lot of my viewers don't, um, you may have to look for other water-based finishes. Application process is going to be the same. Do not overwork the finish. Uh, lay it on a little thicker than you feel comfortable, but not so thick that it starts to drip. And um, recoat within an hour, sand it back, all those good things. Also, I ran a test on some oil-based finish on this board right here. Uh, you can tell that's the raw, and this is General Finish's armor seal on the front. If you hold it up against one of the wall, one of the boards on the wall, you can tell the difference in darkness. If you want to learn more about finishes, I have a whole video on finishes that I will we'll link to right here. And a uh, big thank you to Accor for sponsoring this video, and thank you, as always, to my Patreon supporters. You guys are the best, and I'll catch you on the next one.